Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Shappy, and wouldn't you know it, I was gonna release Emma, my editor, from her eternal servitude under my employ and give her a week off so that I could work on a personal video. Stay tuned for that. But then the King of Crawfish swooped in and said, Ha ha, prank, dear's another UA! So today we'll be going over the newest Unearthed Arcana, link below, and I'll be teaching all of you impressionable youngsters to think like I do and influence the direction of an entire company through memes. So we're gonna be doing a different type of Davy meter where I reveal my score at the end and the score correlates with how well I feel about it getting released as an official feat. As always, keep in mind that most of this is just my opinion, so if you feel like I need to stop talking about my interest in feet, feel free to play your games however you want. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Artificer Initiate. This feat behaves very similarly to Magic Initiate, with the notable addition that it gives you proficiency in a tool of your choice. That's perfectly fine by me, given that Magic Initiate both released before the Artificer, so couldn't include it, and also would have been sort of weird to include with the Magic Initiate on its own, considering all of the Artificer spells are gadgets, so the tool proficiency makes sense there. Three chaps. Chef. Ah, mm, yes, of course. The most important important things to bring to a dungeon crawl is a crockpot and a can of Chef Boyardee. With the Chef feat, you get a minor bonus to Wisdom or Constitution, one of those making more sense than the other, and you learn the time-honored tradition of putting stuff on a fire until it won't kill you anymore. When you put these talents to the test, you can mimic the Song of Rest feature of the Bards using short rests, and you learn how to craft Scooby Snacks to grant temporary HP as a bonus action, effectively making it canon that you can pause in the middle of your gigantic fight with Horrorthor and the Bearded Dragon, and eat four whole roast chickens to boost your health right back up. That doesn't make a lot of sense, and it's sort of abusable. Two chaps. Crusher. Taking on the nickname of my last boyfriend, the Crusher increases your strength or dexterity, lets you really push into people when you're pummeling them, and then you can finish them off with a critical hit that just hurts so good that you get advantage until the end of your next turn, just in case they wanted more. This feat is one in the line of three feats that increase the potency of mundane damage, which I find both necessary for mundane damage to keep up with magic, and a little improvisational in how they come up with these special abilities. Still, knocking people up is fun. Three chaps. Eldritch Adept. Okay, you can have a little pact as a treat. This feat gives you a single warlock invocation, provided you already are a spellcaster, that you can use to dance around the real warlocks and go, Tutti do, look at me, I'm stealing your classes, only cool resource, neener neener. Although it can be taken by actual warlocks, bringing up the amount of invocations that you can get at a time, and playing merry hell with the balance of the class. I personally don't like feats that steal the uniqueness from other classes, and the only time I ever really consider them is when I'm playing that class and I want a steroid. Two chaps. Fey touched. One chap. Moving on. Fighting initiate. <sighs> Fine. <sighs> Fey touched. You increase a mental score, steal a divination or enchantment spell, and you can teleport with Misty Step. All things considered, this is a pretty good deal, but an even better deal would not be making a deal with the Fey. Three chaps anyway, because there's nothing wrong with it. Fighting Initiate. You need to know how to use martial weapons, but this feat will grant you a fighting style normally reserved by the fighter and the paladin, and uh, I guess the ranger, thereby widening the gap between the three weakest classes and the rest of the party, and making it so that the barbarian can get great weapon fighting, because fuck you. The only problem that I have with this is that most of the people who can use fighting styles are already have it, and most of the fighting styles aren't good enough on their own to ignore the ability score increases or just take a different feat, so I don't see this being used by most anybody unless they want to double up on fighting styles. Two chaps. Gunner. Bang bang! You can shoot guns! You get all the benefits of hand crossbow expert, but now it's a hand cross gun expert, and if your DM doesn't like guns, it's still gonna be banned. So nothing much to say here except for when orcs come knocking, I start glocking. Three chaps. Metamagic Adept. This is the other, neener neener, we took your stuff, feat, but instead of warlock invocations, it's sorcerer metamagic, thereby completely draining the sorcerer of any and all uniqueness. As per the feat, you need to be a spellcaster to use it, but it gives you two metamagic options, as well as two shiny sorcery points that, once again, are best used by the actual sorcerer to get the most mileage out of the class, because lord knows it needs a boost anyway. Where the warlock is a big boy and it can stand on its own even without the invocations, the sorcerer is just a gimped wizard without its metamagic, and so I object wholly and completely to giving that power to anybody else. One chap. Piercer. Taking on the nickname of my second to last boyfriend, the piercer nets you an increase in strength or dex, you can stick your polearm into them even harder than before, and when you land that perfect stab, your momentum grabs you another dice to ram with. Just like with a crusher, I am left completely satisfied. Three chaps. Poisoner. Holy hell, they really took my laughing at poison to heart. This thing is chonky. Learning how to use the poisoner's kit is obvious, but ignoring resistance to poison and applying it as a bonus action is really good. And being able to make really powerful poisons is also insane, considering you can now just spend your free time making poison poison bottle after poison bottle after poison bottle, since there's no limit so long as you've got the gold, and you can go through your fights constantly applying, inflicting, and reapplying poison like a madman, because bonus actions are cheap on most martial characters. Too powerful. One chap. Practiced Expert. Expertise used to be special. Now you can buy it at your local feat store, and it comes with a new skill and an ABI and whatever you want. There really isn't much critique to give. You want expertise? There you go. Two chaps for stealing someone else's gimmick. Shadow Touched. The edgy cousin to Fey Touched. It does everything that that 
feat does, but instead of teleporting, you create darkness, and instead of divination or enchantment, you get an illusion or necromancy spell. I was wondering why Fey Touch didn't give illusion magic, given that Fey are dicks like that, and I guess the reason is to not step on Shadow Touch toes to add some variety between the two. Still, it's a creative concept, and I like it. Three chaps. Shield training. One physical score of your choice gets a boost, you learn how to sword and board, you can pick up and put down your shield as a free action, which, let's be honest, everybody was doing anyway, and you can even use your shield as a spellcasting focus, thus finally making shields completely viable to use as a spellcaster for no reason in particular. I'll say that this is one of the more unique feats on this list, and if it showed up in a new splat book, I wouldn't be mad. Three chaps. Slasher. Taking on the nickname of this guy I've been seeing, Slasher caresses your strength or dex, goes straight for the legs so that your quivering makes you move slower, and when it cuts you just right, you get disadvantage for being weak in the knees. You know the drill at this point, it's the same as the other two. Three chaps. Tandem Tactician. Since the Mastermind didn't go over very well for the Rogue in Xanathar's, I guess the developers wanted to try again at making a strategist for the party with the Tandem Tactician, boosting help actions by stretching them out and hitting two people at once with them. I'm a much bigger fan of this anybody-can-do-it thought process, since every class should have the capability of being a smart battle boy, not just one specific subclass of one specific class. Three chaps, and I hope to see it soon. Tracker. I mean, fuck the ranger, I guess. This thing increases your wisdom, gives you hunter's mark, and gives advantage on tracking creatures with survival, all the things that people ever really wanted to play the ranger for. So there's just really no reason to do it. It's not even something you really want on the ranger. Since your wisdom's probably already high, you already have hunter's mark, and being able to cast it another time doesn't fix the problem of it dominating your concentration. And tracking people is nice, but it's more situational than another ABI increase, or feats that you desperately need to have to keep up with the other players. One chap for potentially deleting the ranger harder than my own channel did. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out all my social media in the description below. Let me know what other videos you want me to talk about, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can keep snoring the cocaine that is Unearthed Arcana. But yeah, Davy out.